Hello, it's Jim Games here once again and welcome to this new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In this video we are going to create this inventory slot with the background, which is the button, then it has the icon, which it doesn't have now, but it has here, then it has this amount and this amount background. So yeah, let's get started. So, first you want to go to the link in the description that takes you to my Google Drive and you want to download this inventory folder. After you have done that, you want to go to the textures folder and you want to import the whole folder there. Okay? Then we want to select all of these new files and we want to right click and we want to uh, asset actions, bulk edit, via property matrix like this. Then here, what we want to do is we want to go here to the compression settings and we want to change this to be user interface 2D and now texture group to be UI. Okay, now we can close this. Now, what we want to do, we want to go to the blueprint and we want to go to the widgets, uh, HUD, this one. Now we want to right click and we want to create a blueprint class, which will be type, uh, sorry, uh, user, user widget. Let's rename this to be W inventory slot. Okay, now let's open it. Now we are here on the designer. What we want to do first is we want to add a canvas panel. Okay. Then what we want to do, we want to click from here and change this fill screen to custom and set this to 120 by 120. Okay. Now let's add a size box to here. This size box we want to anchor to the full uh, canvas. And then we want to set the offset left, top, right, and bottom all to zero, like that. And then we want to size the content, width, override, and height, override. And we want to set this to 120. And like that. Next thing, we want to get a button, and we want to move it to the size box. Uh, sorry, to the size box, not next to it, like this, under it. Now we want to rename this button to be button back round. Okay, and let's uh, check this uh, is variable and make it true. And then what we want to do, we want to open the style. And let's open the normal here the image, what we want to change it to. We want to search for a slot. It will get this inventory slot BG, which is which stands for background. Let's get it to here. Then what I want to do here is I want to open this tint and I want to make this uh, V 0.5. Also all these will get to 0.5. Okay. And change this draw as to image like that. Now what we want to do is we want to close this normal and we want to right click, copy and paste it to Howard and you can see here that it changes. Okay, and let's also paste it to pressed and disabled. Now let's open the Howard and here I want to click on this tint and I want to change this uh, we to 0.75 so it will get a little bit lighter okay and also I want to change this inventory slot BG to inventory slot BG selected simple as that and actually we can now just copy this to the pressed so it's easier and you can see here that it changes now let's open the pressed and let's change this tint to 1 I think it's even better, you can see it's 
this color it's a little bit lighter and even more lighter. Now the last one which will be uh, disabled. Let's close the pressed and open to disabled. Here let's change the image to inventory slot empty. Okay and I think I want to set this tint to 0.5 which is which it already is. Okay so we don't have to change anything there. And now here under uh, normal padding and press padding let's change this to zero and zero that way it will change all these to zero and all these to zero okay simple as that now what we want to do next let's actually compile and save we have a few unsaved we had four unsaved things now under this button background what we want to do we want to get a border and we want to move it to the button background and we want to rename this border to be item icon and we want to make it as variable now here what we want to do uh, we want to set this slot padding to zero and also fill and fill and then under the content what we want to do we want to set to left align horizontally and bottom align vertically then i want to set the left uh, padding to three and bottom padding to three and top and right to zero so three zero zero three and that will be because we will add the text uh, background uh, uh, sorry amount text background and amount text and we want them to be a little bit off from the uh, corner, basically. Now, here on the brush, what we want to do, we want to just change this image size to 120. 120. Then we don't have to do anything else than click on this and change the alpha to zero. Simple as that. Okay, let's click. Okay. Now, you, now we cannot see it anymore. So the next thing, let's actually compile and save again. Now the item icon selected, we want to get another border and move it under this border. This, and now we want to rename this to be amount bg or background, it doesn't matter. Now let's also make this as variable and here I'm on background yes uh, so let's set the we don't have, have to touch this okay we want to change this content actually it is already there so it has to be fill horizontally fill vertically and padding here let's Uh, let's actually set this to zero first and then here under the brush and under the tint let's click on that and let's set it to black and alpha 0.5 I think that's pretty good okay and now as this selected we want to get a text and we want to move this text under this amount background now you can see uh, what is it is trying to do and now let's set this uh, sorry we have to set the text block uh, let's set, set the text like it doesn't matter to something so we can see I will set it to 24 now the font let's open it I want to set the font to be 18 and also the font family uh, sorry uh, typeface to be uh, this red, re I never can pronounce that, but yeah, this one. <laughs> then, now, when we go, actually, sorry, we have to make this as variable, also change this to be amount text. Okay, now let's go back to the amount background, and here under the content, let's add, you can see that 
this number is too close to the corner and uh, to the left corner and to the light, right corner. So let's add some padding, maybe three to the left and three to the right. You can see the border has a little bit more like uh, area here. You can adjust this however you want. You can make this like five if you want or like one. But yeah, I will make them three. So yeah, I think it's actually starting to look pretty good. I actually will quickly just check that. What else do we have to do here? We don't actually have to do anything. Yeah, we don't have to change those. You can put it to the middle. I think it shouldn't matter that much because we have set this to the size size to content. So this actually doesn't do anything. So it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, so I will set this back to 24. And so now let's compile, let's save all and let's go to the graph. Now we have to first add few variables here. So variable and first one will be called W in the uh, in the inventory uh, ref. Now let's change the variable type to w in. Fuck, I cannot write today. Uh, or type a w inventory slot object reference. And here we want to make it instance editable and expose on spawn. Compile, save. Now let's add another variable, and this one will be called in use, and it will be type boolean, and it also has to be instance editable and expose on spawn. Compile and save. I don't know why I compile and save every time, but it doesn't matter. And the next one will be called item id, and the variable type, of course, will be name. And the next one will be called amount, and it will be Din, 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 din. of course integer and last one will be called item details or data or whatever and this variable will be call uh, type item struct structure item struct like that now we can Compile and save again. And actually, item ID also instance editable and expose on spawn. And the same thing for the amount. And to the item details, we don't have to do that. Yeah, because we will get it here, here basically. Now compile and save all again. And let's delete everything else than the event construct and let's move it up here to the this starting point see here <laughs> and now what we want to do we want to add a branch so b and left click then we want to get the in use so we want to check if the variable in use is true or false and then under here let's create a new custom event this first custom event will be uh, called that details and let's go under here and let's copy it again here and let's call this one set empty okay and now in use true let's call the set details and on the false let's call the set empty okay compile and save now here on the set details we have to create yet another function which will be called get item details and here what we want to do we want to get the item id we want to right click and get a, a get data table and this bottom one get data table row Let's connect it to here and let's get our items data table and let's connect the item id to the row name and from here out row let's promo uh sorry let's get the item details and let's set it to the variable okay 
and we don't have to do anything else. Compile, save. Now, what we want to do next is we want to close this. Here are the set details. Let's call it. Now let's create yet another uh, function, and this will be called set item details. Okay. And here, what we want to do, we want to get the item details down here. Let's leave some space. Let's split it. And we want to get the item icon. Let's get it under here. And to here. Uh, from here, we want to set brush like this. And in brush, let's split this one. Uh, and let's set the uh, in brush image size to 120 by 120. And in brush image, let's get the item details icon and let's connect it to here. Okay. Now let's get the item details, uh, details again here and let's split it. Now we have to check if the item details max stack size is greater than one. And let's add a branch. And why do we want to check that? Is because if our item has max stack size of one, then we don't want to show the number next to the item. If it has max stack size bigger than one, then we want to show it. So it's an item that is stackable, basically. Okay. Now, if it's not, what we want to do, let's go under here. Uh, let's get the amount background here. Let's set visibility and from defaults and let's set it to hidden like that. And up here on the true, if it, if it is bigger than one, then we want to get the amount text up here and we want to set text under the content uh, from the true like that and from here we want to oh sorry we want to get the amount let's get it to here let's connect to here it will create this to text and let's open this and let's not use grouping and we don't actually have to change anything else here right now Let's make this a little bit tighter. Maybe like this. Yeah. Uh, something like that, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so if we if it's greater than one, we want to show the amount on the amount text, sorry, uh, set the value. If it's not, then we want to hide the whole background and the text this one is under the background, so it will also be hidden. So yeah. Now let's go to the event graph and let's set item details after the get item details, like this. Now here under the set empty, what we want to do, we want to get the button background and we want to set is enabled and we want to that it make this false so it will be disabled because we changed this uh, button background here on disabled to be this inventory slot empty okay and then let's also get the amount background and let's just set visibility and let's set it to be hidden So yeah. Okay, now let's just compile and save all. And I actually think that was all for this video. On the next episode, we will create the actual inventory, the widget. But yeah, hope you liked the video. If you did, please click the like button and subscribe for more. And yeah, hope you have a great day and see you on the next one. Bye.